So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeffrey Fry, and um, I'm the past Kiza president. And today we will be doing a webinar. And uh, just um, yeah, my I'm, my background is a technical service manager for Neck Greenacres Hospital in the Eastern Cape. Um, it used to be Port Elizabeth, and it's had a number of name changes. We won't go down there, but um, the focus is not on me, but the focus today is on Jürgen Kuhn. And he is the senior project pro product and clinical engineering, clinical application manager, sorry, for infusion technology. And today he'll be going over the Conex, the depths of anesthesia monitoring device, two monitoring solutions in one device using a single sensor. Just a little bit of background on Jürgen. He has over 24 years experience in the medical equipment field. He began by spending four years working as a medical supplies sales representative um, and then moved on. He worked for six years in sales for a company called Britain Healthcare. I'm sure some of you are familiar with that name as many, many years ago. And he knows he now works for Fresenius Kobe South Africa uh, for the infusion technology. He has been the clinical application manager for the past 12 years and the senior product manager for the past two years. Jurgen, well, welcome and thank you very much for taking the time and presenting to our guests. And we look forward to hearing what you have to share with us today. And um, for those of you who may miss this by accident, by any chance of uh, maybe broadband issues, we are recording and the video will be posted on the Kisa YouTube channel uh, a few in, in a few weeks time for those who have missed. Um, just a, a few housekeeping rules. Um, some of you may have noticed already that your microphones have been muted and uh, this is not by accident. Uh, we, we're just trying to manage the the amount of interference in the webinars. If you have any questions, um, Dieter, maybe if you can just quickly show the, the, the that number on the screen again. Uh, there's a cell phone number, it's the Kisa office number. You're more than welcome to post a question to that number on WhatsApp. And I will then ask the question at the end on the Q&A. And um, we, yeah, we can release the microphones and uh, maybe if you have a, a question or two, you can answer. But yeah, Jürgen and I will then engage on the questions and answers, uh, which will also be recorded and then posted after the webinar. Just for your information, the number is 08074-2027-4344. So that's 072. 0274344. Thank you, Dieter. Jürgen, thank you very much for your time, and I hand over to you. Um, Jeffrey, um, thank you very much for a great introduction. Um, we're going to spend not a lot of um, um, hours here tonight. I'm really looking forward to, to present to you the Conox, um, our depth of anesthesia monitor. Uh, we're going to have a short introductory video um, and then after a very quick presentation and time for questions. I'm just going to hand over to my IT expert on this side so that we can start a video. Just give us a second.
thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. Um, I was kicked out of the meeting. Maybe um, we put too much strain on our uh, um, IT network due to the video. Um, so thank you very much once again for the opportunity to present to you Conox, the two monitoring solution in one device um, using one single sensor. So Conox has been recently launched by Fresenius Carby. Um, this is obviously a DEF um, of anesthesia monitor, um, and a lot of you've got experience with DEF of anesthesia monitoring in your environment where you work. Um, so this is something that should be familiar with you. Um, this device is what you see is what you get. Um, so when you look at the Conox and you see the screen that I'm currently displaying here, um, this is all the information that you see all in one glance. And this is one of the big benefits of this device that the doctors who, um, who commonly use these devices have commented that they've got with one glance, they can actually view all the parameters required um, and they really appreciate it um, for this. Um, it's not a huge device, it's, it's like a small tablet, um, it's a touch screen and with battery backup um, of about two hours, um, you are connected to the patient monitoring the depth of anesthesia. As I said, this device uses one sensor with three electrodes. So with this one sensor, we have the ability to monitor um, two parameters. So the first parameter is obvious, the consciousness concentration. So here we obviously monitor the depth of the anesthesia. And, and then there's a second parameter that is something that's quite new, and this is the nociception. So both of these parameters are based on the raw EEG that is monitored and measured by this Conox. Now, very interestingly, um, the Conox, when you um, when it measures the raw EEG data, the processing time to display the, um, the consciousness level is about 25 seconds. So it's really very, very rapid in the response and it tracks extremely well um, during the anesthesia process for the patient. So the anesthetists really have a very good real-time monitoring of what's happening um, when it comes to the raw EEG data that the device is displaying. So nociception, just for those, um, nociception, um, that value is derived um, from the raw EEG and it's um, different frequencies that are measured. And the big thing with nociception is that the device or the Conox predicts the probability of a patient experiencing pain or external stimulation. So this is a really a very useful tool. And we've seen numerous times um, during this last year or, and the year before when we introduced the product um, in the market that the customers or the doctors in the hospital really valued this value as well. We, I'm just touching on this quickly because I think this is very important. All monitoring these days um, somehow needs to connect to other devices. So currently the Conox monitor allows um, for the um, connection to Android devices. So there you can physically monitor the status of your patient. You can also view the spectrogram and for the seniors are in the process of developing the software with Apple in mind so that the Conox will also be able to integrate with the iOS operating system. So this is what is planned and is currently not available, but Android is available. Very interestingly, um, on the iPhone or on your Android device in future or currently on the Android, you will be able to view the spectrogram. So instead of just showing a EEG waveform, you will be able to um, also view the spectrogram in a different color coded according to the different frequencies. Um, there's also a nice correlation between the spectrogram and the different uh, anesthetic agents that were used and also dexmedimidine that is used for sedation purposes. So there's a great correlation they found um, when the device was developed and researched. So there's the spectrogram, obviously, and very important. Everybody's always asking, how does this device do both of these um, uh, calculations. Well, here is the quadratic model used by the Conox device. The frequencies are there available, and this is all part of the algorithm that is used for the Conox to be able to measure and calculate and display the values for the, con for the consciousness and the nociception. And then obviously all the other values that you saw on the screen is also derived from this one sensor. You know, 
a lot of times um, we always say the brain is not a number and we uh, when you work in, uh, in 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 anesthesia you would sometimes work with the anesthetist in theater we use a lot of reference points and they always reflect to some number so that in the ideal world um, when a patient is deep sedated you want to be in a level between 40 and 50 according to the depth of anesthesia monitor and but there's a lot more behind this so very important, the brain is not just a number, um, but it's a number that helps the doctors and people like myself who sometimes assist with them in theater with their devices to interpret it um, and the patient state. And this just it gives us a guideline. So very interestingly, the raw EEG um, waveforms is, is, is the raw data is displayed on the Conox device, um, so you can actually view it in real time. You will also able to um, set up the trend print lines and the duration of the display. Um, very interestingly, uh, what we found was that, that there's not a lot of anesthetists that have a lot of experience reading the raw EEG. Um, and this slide I'm showing you is just to depict what a wake uh, raw EEG looks like when a patient is sedated, anesthetized, and when there's birth suppression. So the Connox in an overview. Um, on the screen, you've got a lot of very clear information displayed. So obviously, let's start from um, the obvious one from the right, the white value, that's your consciousness. Um, what people are familiar with other devices in the market that has the same scale. So we, uh, the Connex device is based on the same scale. So if a patient is awake, the value will be at 99. And as you um, sedate the patient deeper, um, the value will then reduce accordingly. The yellow value that you see on the screen, that's your nociception. And what we found was that this value corresponds extremely well with pain management. Um, and then there's a big benefit in using Conox, not only in the operating environment, but you can also use it for sedation monitoring in the ICU environment. One thing that was taught during this whole COVID experience was to monitor patients' sedation levels in an ICU. Um, because you want to wean patients quicker from the ventilator. To, um, if you were heavy handed when it comes to sedation, it takes a time for you to um, get a patient weaned off the ventilator and for patients to mobilize and recover. So if it was possible to monitor um, sedation levels, then it was highly recommended. There's a study that they've done and they referenced it as a good guide. So very important that you could also use the Connox device, not only in the operating environment to monitor the sedation and also the pain management. Currently, um, this device is also used in one of the pediatric units in one of the one of the Johannesburg hospitals where the device is used in the ICU in a downing unit. Um, to monitor the sedation levels on babies in the running unit. And so far, the results are quite um, promising and uh, or say positive, and uh, they continue to use it as a way in monitoring the sedation level. The value in the red, what you see is your birth suppression. Um, and then obviously you see uh, the value in uh, blue is your EMG or your electromyogram. And then you've got in green your value for the signal quality. And you can also see the color coding there on the trend. And you can see that the impedance uh, values are also displayed and obviously the battery status of the device. So once again, you've got one glance, see everything that is important at that moment. And all of this data is um, shown all at once. As I said earlier, the consciousness level is, is, is something that's really important for the anesthetist. And here you can see the values um, for general anesthesia is in the range of 40 to 60. Um, and then obviously for sedation purposes and awake values. Um, hardly, you, you, you know, in an ideal world, you shouldn't go below 20 and you should definitely not go to a value of zero on the consciousness scale. Because otherwise you get isoelectric um, birth suppression. The nociception, as I said, ties extremely well with your treatment when it comes to pain management, analgesia. So by monitoring the nociception, the anesthetist have the ex or they have the ability to also titrate their analgesia much better. So what we found was while they are using Conox, they actually reduce the consumption of the analgesia agent. And therefore you, you reduce um, um, toxic levels. Um, also the patients would um, breathe much quicker if 
if you want to wait them. Um, they also, you can titrate much better to the pain response the patient um, experience. What we've also noticed is that this value corresponds very well when there's external stimulation, for example, the surgeon pulling on the arm during a um, operation or during the hip, um, if there's a hip replacement, and when they manipulate the hip, for example, it can become, uh, you know, the patient can trigger um, a response and the device picks that up extremely well. Blur suppression is a value that is not always displayed very clearly on a lot of the anesthetic monitor or the depth of anesthesia monitors in the market. And this is a very important value. Uh, Blur suppression should ideally be at a range of zero. Um, sometimes it will go up to one or two. And burst suppression relates to the isolatory um, activity of the brain suppressed. And the brain is start is like a brain starting to, trying to start up the activity and then it flutters once again. And this is usually deep to, um, due to very deep sedation. Um, this happens commonly if you experience a patient that has received a very deep anesthetic, um, sometimes even overdosed, um, and then you experience burst suppression. But very interestingly, we've also experienced in color film where the sedation levels were at a correct level. But what we found was the patient's blood pressure was extremely low. And due to the lack of oxygenation, the suppression value was also triggered. And that um, informed the anesthetist of the possible risk. Um, and he was able to recover the patient's blood pressure by adding more fluids and some ephedrine. And this corrected the burst suppression as well. There's some studies that also uh, um, reference that patients that experience severe birth separation, there's a good chance of these patients having a, a, um, a incident during the year, and some even have died um, after surgery. Um, and that was directly related to um, birth separation. Electromyogram, um, obviously this value is there to record the facial muscles and the movement of the eye, and also very interestingly, what we found was once again, when a patient experienced an overdose, for example, of a remifentanil, it's an it's a analgesic that is used um, for um, pain management, commonly used in, an, in a theater environment. When the patient is overdosed, for example, and it happens very quickly, then the patient experiences muscle rigidity as well. And this was also detected by the EMG. So you've got both values and it's just for the anesthetist to interpret which one is valid at that moment in time. Signal quality is clearly displayed and obviously signal quality is definitely impacted by um, artifacts um, caused by diathermy being used, but the device have a tendency to recover very quickly and uh, will still monitor even though the values um, or the signal quality may be reduced. On the device, it's also important to monitor the quality of your signal received from the um, patient sensor. So as you've seen, the patient sensor basically have three contacts, and then you can monitor the impedance values. And in the ideal world, we want the impedance to be less than um, five. Now, what can influence good contact is the skin preparation is really important. Now, what makes the Conox slightly different than the other devices, we don't use we don't recommend the use of alcohol to clean the patient's skin. Um, part of the, um, the pad that comes with the, with the sensor in the packaging, you will find is a little fi very fine sandpaper that is being used to just rub and remove the oil on the skin, and this allows for good contact. If the sensor is applied well, um, the response is really, really well, um, and it's really appreciated by many of the anesthetists. Talking about data integration, um, this is the hot topic these days in South Africa. Everybody wants to connect and collect data from patients. We also offer um, as a separate um, device, the Conox Lite, works on the same algorithms with the same kind of patient sensor and um, um, cables. Um, but with this device, we have the ability to connect directly currently to the Philips modules, and there is work being done to connect to other modules. This will allow hospitals who currently wants to collect patient data during anesthesia to be collected through the patient monitor and then sent to the electronic management system. Conox, as, it, as a device by itself, is currently not designed to connect to a, a network via the J45. 
it can communicate with Bluetooth and send data to a Bluetooth monitor or an external PC, uh, but that obviously needs to be set up um, independently. I'm now going to end soon. Um, so if there's any questions, um, you're more than welcome to, um, to raise them. If there's any uh, feedback required um, for us to follow up with your customers, we will gladly do that. You can communicate to us via your website. Um, Fresenius Kabi is part of the KISA group and we're really proud um, sponsor and we are able to share with you um, an evaluation um, for a device for the trial period, um, all the documentation and also study material is available. Uh, there's a lot of information available on the Connox. So I want to say thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to hand over to questions. If there's any questions, you are more than welcome to ask. I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen so that we can see your questions. Thank you, Jürgen. Um, so far, it just indicated that there's no questions. I have one or two. And just for the audience, should you have any question, maybe just raise your hand um, if you haven't been able to send to Dita yet. And Dita then can unmute you to allow you to allow you to, to answer the question. Uh, Jürgen, one question from my side. Obviously, the sensor is single use or multiple use? Uh, the sensor is intended for single use um, due to the initial, um, very interestingly, when we started off with Connox, the, the sensor was not designed um, to, um, obviously it was designed for single use. But what we found in South Africa was our very ingenuitive um, customers, they were reusing the sensors very effectively. So in the meantime, Fresenius um, had to change that. And in the sensor is now a little microchip that is detected by the cable um, that it is reused and it won't allow you to reuse it uh, um, for another patient. So yeah, it's single use only. Now I'm gonna sound like a pharmacist now asking a few questions, but what is, um, what's the IP rating on, on the device? Um, the IP rating, let me just check for you. Uh, let me just double check for you. And then while, good... while, while, while you add that, um, then another question is, what is the, uh, does the sensor have a NAPI code? Yes, the same sensor does have a NAPI code. Our pricing is extremely favorable. I think, as I remember, recall correctly, the NAPI, um, the IP, uh, IP for this um, is um, 21. So it's not designed to submerge it into water. It is splash proof, but um, obviously, um, you know, you can't um, submerge it into liquids and go and uh, soak it in water if you want to disinfect it. And then one more question from our side is a bit of a technical one. I noticed that the power, the power port, um, it looked like it's got an external power supply. Is it internal or external? Um, it's currently got an external um, power supply. And the reason for that was just because of the monitor to make it small and you know to fit anywhere, um, it, it is the supplied with an external power supply, um, and is dedicated towards the Connox device. It's got um, two hours battery backup as well, um, and at this stage there's no plans to introduce a Connox device with an internal power supply. Um, they try to reduce the the um, the size of the device. Any other questions? I'm going through the list to see if there's any hands raised. I don't see any at this point. But while I'm waiting, I, I, I have maybe another one that's, that's now sparked. And well, my, another question from my side. Um, what sort of service intervals or is it a service free device? Well, this device is intended to be serviced once every three years. Um, like all the Fresenius devices in the market, we service them once every three years. In that period of time, the battery will be replaced. Um, and if there's any other software upgrades required, um, that will be done. Uh, we don't charge for the software upgrades. Okay, I'm just going through again. There's no hands raised. So very quiet in the audience. Uh, fine. And we are sort of on the time of half past four and uh, we did indicate about, I think, half an hour time slot for this session. Yes. Um, anything, anything else from your side, Jürgen, before um, we conclude? 
No, we just want to say thank you very much for this opportunity to present the conox to you. Um, during COVID, we had really had trouble to access our customers. Uh, we couldn't get to the clinical engineers. You were all, most of them were in survival mode. And we say really thank you very much um, to all the hard work and commitment that you guys had. Um, Fresenius implemented the email me um, document that we shared via email and, and cell phone uh, with a web and based access so that all technical servicing could have been requested and locked. And this was not only related to the Conox device, but all the other infusion pumps that we had in the market. Um, we really say thank you very much for all your hard work and commitment. And um, we are really there to support you. Um, and thank you very much for this opportunity. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I'd also like to just say thank you very much for our, uh, just uh, our gold members, so obviously for seniors being one of them. And uh, we also have, oh, I lost my, my list, excuse me. Sorry about that. I had a technical difficulty of my own, yeah. And uh, for some weird reason, my PC has decided to go on a go slow. But yeah, thank you very much for all our gold members, for seniors being one of them. And I, we really appreciate uh, these these webinars. And we have a few more lined up, so we will be communicating in the near future to to all our members and you're more than welcome to make contact with Dieter should you have any inquiries or any questions with regards to um, yeah, future events and please if you know of anybody we are planning um, we, are, we do have a diary the Kisa diary you're more than welcome to go to the Kisa homepage and scroll through the diary to see what's up and coming events uh, we try now and again to post even international events. I know it's been quite tough now with COVID and international travel is on a very minimum and uh, many budgets are very cut. Are cut. Um, but yeah, you're more than welcome to, to browse the, the calendar. So yeah, the likes of uh, Storts, uh, Vaymed, Mindray, Safemed, Sekiwu, Medold and SSM. Thank you very much for your support and to everybody on the on this webinar. I, I trust that you have a very good evening and a good night's rest in preparation for tomorrow. And may you have a good weekend, long weekend. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Dieter, you. for hosting on your side. Thanks, Jürgen. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jürgen.